Keith Fennig is an exceptionally popular landscape artist and author who believes that anyone can be taught to paint. His thorough understanding of students' needs and his refreshingly different and relaxed approach guarantee that you'll create beautiful landscape paintings of your own. In this next landscape, I'm going to demonstrate the versatility of acrylic watercolours. I painted in the sky using the colours and techniques demonstrated earlier, and I painted in some distant hills. Now it's dried, we'll remove the tape. Pull the tape off gently and it shouldn't tear the paper. It wouldn't dare. And there's our nice water line, perfectly straight. Let's build up the bank on the left hand side, creating impressions of snow. So I'm starting using the rigger and building up around the water line like this. I'm using the side of the brush and I'm just dancing across the paper like that. I'm using a paint grey with a bit of Liz and Crimson mix. Dancing across the paper, depositing little bits of paint to create some shadows in the snow. Of course what we need to do now is just add a few little bits of stubble. And we do that by simply using the rigger and just flicking up like that, look. Just to create an impression, there's always some stubble going through the snow. And now I'm using acrylics here, so of course I can paint the reeds around the water's edge. And when I paint the water, of course, unlike traditional watercolour, they won't wash out. That'll suffice at this stage. It's time to paint in the water now. So with a mix of Payne's Grey and a bit of Liz and Crimson, we're going to put in some water. It's a good idea to test your colours first of all, a bit of off-cut watercolour paper. I'm starting in the foreground where it's got to be darker. And as I work back, I'm going to lighten the colour by dipping and wiping. There we are, look. Add more water. It wants to be light in the background to achieve recession in your painting. Very important, basic principle of design. Let's add a bit more Payne's Grey and just a little bit of burnt umber this time to create a, a grey in the foreground. There we are. Now, I need to link two sides of the river. I don't know why, I just know from experience I've got to do it. Now it's dried, I'm going to add a bit more darker shadow on this side. I'm using the side of the brush, just gently stroking across the rough paper to achieve this texture I want. I'm going to lighten the paint by dipping and wiping and putting a bit of colour across here. A bit of shadow underneath this area here. It's a good idea to stand back and have a look at it. Just stroke it across like that. I'm going to have a little bit of shadow there at that side. And I think that will suffice. I'm going to paint two large trees, or bushes really, on this side. But to control the paint flowing down, I'm going to put a bit of tape across there like that. And I'm going to my Derwent water brush, and I'm going to put in some trees. I'm doing them dark to start with. Well, they're going to be bushes really. More Payne's Grey with a bit of burnt sienna. Bit more Payne's Grey. I need to do them dark, so when I put the snow on, they'll stand out. I'm going to show you how to do that. More Payne's Grey, I want it darker as it comes down to ground level. Right, now what I'm going to do now is use a little bit, I think I need a little bush there, put something in there. Now I need some white acrylic now. Very gently touching across the underpainting. Creating deposits of snow on the trees. Very gently. You've got to be a sensitive artist. And there's always some drifts in the bottom when the wind blows on these bleak winter nights. I think that will suffice. I'm adding, I'm adding in some tree structure, quite simply, using the rigger of course for fine detail. And then I'm just going to overpaint that with a little bit of crisp white. A bit of snow drifted in down the bottom. 
I think that will suffice. I've added a few bushes on this side. What we need to do now is to remove the tape. And we need to put some shadows to make it realistic. So just a few shadows like that, very, very simply painted, and take some of the shadows up into the foliage so they don't look as if they're an addition that you just thought of. There we are. A few over there like that. And there we are. Now what I'm going to do next is, I'm a bit concerned about this being no, nothing over there. We need something to pick out the water line over there. So I'm going to stretch the tape across there again and just put a hint of some trees growing in the far distant hills. So the tape's on. That's just using the, the rigger brush, just indicates something growing on the far banks like that. Just put it on very, very simply. Just wiggle it around in little circular movements. And then I'll show you a little tip. Just a few going up the mountainside or the hills, whatever they are. Make the viewer think. And I'm going to remove the tape. Gently, of course. And there we are, that looks better. To improve the composition, I'm going to put a fence down here, coming down to the water's edge. Now, when you're painting fences, it's important not to paint square fences. The distance between the fence posts wants to be twice the height of your fence. And when you're using a rigger, you mustn't forget, as I've just done, that there's fewer hairs in the brush, so you need wetter paint. There we are. Simply painted fence. But what I need to do is to just add a little bit of snow on the fence posts. So we're just adding a little bit of white, just dab, dab, dab like that. This is a bleak winter morning, this is. That's, that's improved the composition. I'm going to paint the rocks in, and very, very simply, this is a, a very stiff brush. It's a three quarter flat, it's quite stiff. Don't make all your rocks the same size. Don't make them the same shape. I'm just roughing them in now. I need more Payne's Grey to add some depth to the rocks. Darker on this side. There we are. Like that. There's a few rocks in our river. Now it's important that we put some shadow underneath, otherwise the rocks look as if they're floating on the surface. So a bit of Payne's Grey, a little bit of alizarin crimson, and very simply painted underneath there, I've just put some shadow. These little details are very important to make it real. And then I'm going to show you my little trick for adding light on the rocks. You're going to like this. I need to dry those rocks. This is a water soluble crane, a white one. Look how easy it is to put white. All you do is you dip it in that water and you simply draw with it. You can do 20 rocks a minute with this. Once you've got the white on, you can change the rocks to any colour you want. When I'm faced with the river scene and I've got up to 100 rocks in, masking fluid isn't the answer as far as I'm concerned because I'm using a rough paper and you can't get the masking fluid out of the bottom. So I put a deposit of white on like that. And then all we need to do is to use a small rigger brush and I think we'll use a little bit of red and we'll push that white around and blend it in across the rocks. A bit more red. Sometimes the rocks have a purpley hue, sometimes the green, sometimes the brown, depends whether the rivers or depends on where they're situated and which part of the country they are. So I'm just pushing it around like that. And I'll add a bit of Payne's Grey, a little bit of burnt umber. I'll just add some darker tone on the left hand side and around the bottom of the rock. Very, very quickly done. Shape that one a bit more. 